Hi crafting friends and welcome to this 21st entry of the Thoughtful Knitter video journal. If you've not been here before my name's Ailey and this is my little space on YouTube where I speak about all of my crafty adventures, mainly knitting and in fact in this episode it's going to be entirely knitting. Um, but you are most welcome here and I hope that you enjoy what you see and that you would consider subscribing and joining me in the future. Um, for anyone who has been before, welcome back. It is wonderful to spend some time with you again. Um, what do I normally see? I normally tell you where I'm coming from. So I am in my living room in the far north of the Scottish mainland. And today we have got sunshine and showers. So it might be, it's quite bright at the moment, but we might be heading into darkness quite soon. It has definitely turned into autumn. Um, the nights are fair drawing in and it's gotten quite chilly out there. Weather summary complete. <laughs> Let's get on with things. Um, what can I tell you? First things first is if you are into social media and would like to follow me anywhere else, I will put my links up here. Um, I will also let you know that there will be chapters in this video so that you can navigate quite easily. They will be in the description box which is down here and uh, anything that I talk about patterns or yarn or anything um, will be in the description box as well. Today I'm going to go through quite a lot of patterns so I will probably just link to my Ravelry pages rather than put all the detail that I normally do in the description box. Um, but if you are somebody who can't access Ravelry and you want to know anything that I talk about, um, a little more detail of anything that I talk about, then please do just email me. Um, my email address is thethoughtfulknitter at gmail.com. Okay, so let's get into the content that you're all here for the knitting. Um, today, your eyes are not deceiving you, I am sitting here absolutely roasting in a festive jumper, even though it is still September and three months until Christmas. But the reason is that I thought I would do a special episode about Christmas jumpers. Now, I know it's maybe a bit early, <laughs> but we are moving into the last quarter of the year and knitting is not a quick hobby. And if you want to do a full jumper, then you do probably need to start thinking about it if, unless you're like a speed knitter and have loads of time to knit. Um, so yeah, if this isn't for you, I absolutely understand. I know not everybody celebrates Christmas, but I do think a lot of people like the midwinter festivities and a lot of the jumpers that I'm talking about are maybe more to do with winter than Christmas per se. So I'm hoping there's going to be something for everybody. Um, what I'm planning to do is split it up into sections so that there's something for everyone. The jumpers that I have mainly knit, I've done two for myself, so two adult ones, but the rest have all been for my nephews and niece. Um, I started knitting a Christmas jumper for them when the first, for my eldest two nephews were one, so that was back in 2017 and it's become a bit of a tradition, I've done that every year since. So I have worked my way through 12 different patterns and you can benefit from my experience of knitting those if you want it. Um, not all of those patterns are for kids. Some have been um, adult garments that I have modified or they have been, I've taken elements from them and incorporated them into children's garments. So I'm hoping there's something for everyone as I said earlier. Um, what I'm going to do for sections is I'm going to talk about, wait till I look at my notes because I'm going to, there is so much to talk about today and I'm definitely going to forget something. Um, so first I'm going to talk about adult jumpers. So if you are not someone who is interested in them for children, then uh, this first section will be for you and the rest you probably won't be overly interested in. Although I would say maybe go to the final section as well because it will be patterns that are on my radar and there will be adult versions in there as well. Um, so yeah, it'll be adult jumpers that I have either modified or incorporated into children's jumpers. The next session, eight section will be 
a patterns that are available for adults and children and the section after that will be patterns that are only available in children sizes and like I said after that will be patterns that are on my radar. I've had to put the light on because the sun has disappeared again behind some very big rain clouds and um, so hopefully things are a bit less changeable if I have that on. Um, and talking about lights, before we get into the episode proper, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to Sirius readers who are sponsoring this video and who have a nice discount on offer for you guys. Earlier this year, they provided me with one of their high definition Sirius lights. I'll put a picture in of me using it. Um, and it has been a game changer. I must admit though that as we've been in the kind of lighter half of the year I've not used it as much as you know there's not been the same need for it but we have now passed the equinox we're into the dark half of the year and I very much expect to be using this on a daily basis especially when we get into the really dark uh, depths of winter. I'll just tell you a little bit about my serious light um, it is manufactured in the UK and it comes with a five year guarantee. Um, mine is a high definition one, but there are also a classic and a Alex light. Wait till I double check, get this right. Yep. Um, so there's something for all budgets available. For me, the best thing about the light is that it uses daylight wavelength technology which means that it replicates the daylight spectrum as close as is technically possible. So it means that it's almost like having daylight. It's not got that yellow in effect that you get from these kind of lights, just normal lights. Um, and it's especially useful, I think, when you're trying to look at colours um, without natural light, if you're doing like ferrule patterns and that. Um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed using mine. I am very much looking forward to using it over the coming months. Um, if you would like to try out a Sirius light, then Sirius readers are offering a discount to uh, followers of this channel. Um, I will put everything down in the description box. There'll be a specific link that'll take you there with the discount already applied, but I'll also put it on the screen here. So the code is TTK24. And what that will offer you is £100 off of the high definition light and also free delivery within the UK. So I'm afraid that's not for out with the UK, but the, dis the £100 discount is available across the board. So yeah, thanks very much to Sirius readers for um, their kindness and let's get on to the knitted jumpers. Let's start things off talking about the adult patterns. So the one I'm wearing is My Dear Sweater by Tanya Barley, who is also known as The Wool Barrow. Now I've obviously made an adult version, but prior to that, I incorporated this motif into another yoke pattern that was specifically for children. What I used was the Strange Brew pattern by Tin Can Knits. If you're not aware of Strange Brew, it is more of a recipe than a pattern and it is available in sizes from like newborn right through to 4XL and um, it kind of shows you the numbers and things to think about when constructing a yoked jumper. You can knit either top down or bottom up and it has, I think it's three different weights of yarn available. Um, so what I did when I knitted this one is I kept to the DK weight for the children. I'll put pictures up of their um, jumpers. I'll have them in front of me as well so I know what I'm talking about. Um, and I, yeah, just put this yoke pattern into it. What, thankfully with it being DK, I just had to finagle the numbers around a little bit to make sure that I had the right number to suit this at the beginning and the end of the yoke um, but uh, you'll be able to see on the picture that I could put the whole yoke in for the elder nephew's um, jumper and then for the younger one I had to drop off that top bit but the rest fitted in. Um, you'll be able to see from mine that the yoke 
finishes a good bit before the underarm split. Um, I've kind of go off, gone off on a tangent. I haven't told you too much about my own one. Um, I knitted this in Holstgarn Super Soft Tail Double um, in Carmine and Almond, I think it was. Um, I, I spoke about it on a previous episode when it was still a work in progress, so I'll link that up above. Um, I can't say I massively enjoyed working with the whole Super Soft and I definitely did not enjoy having to wash it so many times <laughs> to get rid of the spinning oil. Um, the end result is, you know, it's a nice fabric that you get um, and it's nice and warm and I definitely enjoy the gauge that it produces. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to spend too long on this. I'll probably tell you a bit more about it when we're actually into December. Um, so let's keep going. The next one I wanted to tell you about was one that I'm afraid isn't available anymore. Um, it's the Yulgran by Andy Satterland. So I knitted an adult version. Um, again, I spoke about this on a previous episode, which I'll link up again. There's probably no point in looking into this too much because, like I said, it's been discontinued and I modified this quite heavily. Um, so it's it's meant to be like a really tight fitting, cropped, 1950s kind of puff sleeved type thing. Um, I made it more into just a normal jumper, but um, it's got a textured tree on it. So I will put in pictures up here again, but I, the year that I made that for myself, I think it was 2020, the year that everybody wishes never happened. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it was 2020 and I decided I was gonna make myself a Christmas jumper. I had already been like three or four years established with my tradition of knitting for the little ones. And I decided I wanted them all to be matching me. Um, because if I remember rightly, you were allowed to meet up at Christmas, um, although it was just for a few hours on the day that year. Um, yeah, so what I did is I used the chart for this chart here that was for the um, Christmas tree, that's what it's called, and I moved that into a and I dropped that into a flax worsted jumper for the kiddies and I knitted it inside out so it had that same reverse stock and stitch detail. Um, so again, flax, that is a free pattern, but again, it's from Tin Can Knits, also available across all the sizes. There is the flax worsted, there's a flax sock. They've changed their names a few times over the years, but I think that is what their current names are. Um, so yeah, there's an, an idea of something you can do um, of taking an adult pattern and popping it into a child's one. The final one I'm going to tell you about in this section is what I am planning for this year. So I am planning to use this pattern, which is Boreal by Kate Davies. It's one of our older ones and it is a RN weight colourwork pattern. Um, and this has been a bit of a labour of love already and I've hardly started. <laughs> um, what has happened is I have previously knitted adult jumpers at a tighter gauge and a thinner yarn for children and the proportions have all worked out quite well. Um, but in this case, the length, the row gauge has, is really different to mine. Um, and I'm finding that uh, this detail here is going to be too short and it is knitted from the bottom up. There's an awful lot of decreases incorporated into the chart. So it's going to just become an absolute headache and I basically have to rewrite this chart. So as I work around, I'm going to use the body chart and just move it down to the bottom. So I'll work it inverted. What I'll do is I'll have the lighter colour at the bottom coming into the darker colour. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because they're burned and 
if they have the, the light colour at the top, the chances are they're going to spill their dinner down it and it'll be a nightmare for their parents. So, um, yeah, so what I'm doing for this one is I am using the flax sock pattern. So I'm just going to work a raglan, plain raglan in a four-ply yarn. I prefer the four-ply yarns just because the, when colour work is worked on anything thicker, it gets really quite warm and I, I want the beardies to be able to wear these um, as much as possible over the winter months. And I know it's going to be cold outside, but generally inside it is fine and toasty. So, um, yeah, I am planning to turn all of this into four little jumpers. So, uh, <laughs> wish me luck. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I'm quite looking forward to trying this. It's a beautiful, beautiful design. I don't know how wearable it would be inside as an RM weight colour work jumper, but each to their own. And if you live somewhere that's really quite cold or you have a really old house, um, this might be the pattern for you. So that's us finished with the adult patterns. Now what I'm going to talk about are the patterns that are available in adult and children's sizes. So you could a, you could be matchy matchy if you want to. Okay, first things first, let's talk about the Maureen by Tinkham Knits again. Um, also available right across the sizes. This is an RM weight jumper. Um, so again, would be really quite hot. Um, I'll show some pictures. I have knitted this one twice. The first time I knitted this, I modified it by knitting with four ply yarn on a much, much tighter gauge. And what I did was I knitted bigger sizes. Um, so I think for my nephew, who would have been four at the time or five, five maybe, um, I knitted the size adult small, I think it was, or adult medium. Um, but on a lot tighter gauge. So it was a tighter gauge, but I still followed the lengths for the children's patterns. But everything was just so well proportioned that it shrunk right down. I don't think I had to change anything in terms of length of yoke. Everything was incorporated. Um, my niece, who was just a few months old at the time, hers was the children's version. I think it was possibly like age eight to 10 or something that I knitted for her. It was really nice because they were matching but not entirely matching. So you'll be able to see here, they're slightly different patterns. So this is the adult version and then the children's version looks like that. So it's straight into the contrast colour, whereas the adult one has the main colour first. Um, I can't see enough good things about this pattern. It was perfect. I knitted it then a couple of years later in worsted weight. It worked out fine, but like I said, I think it's just far too hot. Um, and my gauge was off and my poor little nephew, he, nephew number three, um, it was far too tight in his arms, so it never fitted him properly. So it was a bit of a disaster. Chalk that up to experience, I think. Um, but yeah, as I said earlier, if you're living somewhere that is really quite cold um, or you feel the cold, then uh, RM weight colour work might be for you. And there's absolutely nothing bad to say about the pattern itself. It worked out beautifully. Um, yeah, so that was number one. And then number two which I would say is probably my most successful um, jumpers to date, were from the Festive Yoke Kids Pullover by Skangier. So there's also a Festive Yoke Pullover in the adult sizes. I haven't knitted it, but I can't imagine that there's any problems with it. This was a really, really good pattern. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it is like a top-down yoked jumper. You're given, I think it's 20 different motifs that you can plug in. 
um, so you could work it just as a yoke or you can work it as all over colour work. Um, this is in four ply or is it sport weight? Four ply I think. Yeah it's in round my phenol so I think that's four ply. I kind of used it as a bit of a blank canvas and I actually plugged in a couple of motifs that weren't from the pattern. So I'll put the first picture up. It was for my nephew number one who is very much into Minecraft. So I asked him what his favourite character was from Minecraft and he said the sheep. So I plotted out, looked them up on the internet, plotted out a little chart for myself and plugged it into the pattern. Now I didn't put enough thought into this. I made life very difficult for myself because there are numerous rows on this wee chart that are three colour colour work and there's one that is four colour colour work. So um, I was kind of regretting my life choices while making that little bit of the jumper but uh, I think it turned out really well in the end and isn't massively Christmassy. It is more of a, a winter jumper that could be worn all through the winter um, and was very much tailored to his preferences. So the other one that I did was for my niece who is still quite tiny. She's, cut, she's just turned three but last year when I knitted this she was very much into nature and she really she was quite often talking about the birdies in the sky and things so I found this a uh, motif and it was a free motif for a mitten pattern and what I did is I plugged that in it had a different stitch count than the ones in the pattern so it, I had to do a little bit of maths but it was all divisible by five I think it was so um, it worked out just fine and I, I kind of moved things around to centre the two birdies so they were kissing right in the middle. Um, and to be honest, I think this is my favourite of all the ones I've ever knitted. Um, she was absolutely adorable in it and that is why I have chosen it for the thumbnail for this episode. So yes, like I said, cannot say enough good things about this pattern. If you only knit one, I would go for this one. You could that could do you for the rest of your life. You could be knitting all sorts of combinations with the motifs that are already in the pattern or you could be adding to it with your own. Um, and like I said, this is a really well written pattern and is available in adult sizes too. So yeah, that was the second one. Now I'm going to move on to the next section, which is going to be patterns that are only available for children. Um, some of these are specifically Christmas uh, jumpers, but I would say on the whole they are more winter jumpers or there's some, some of them are ones that have absolutely nothing to do with Christmas or winter at all and I have Christmas Christmasified them um, because I've made them more because th it's something that that child has been interested in. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll see you on the other side. We are really stepping back in time now. So the first two I'm going to tell you about, first two patterns I'm going to tell you about were in my pre-Ravelry days. So I didn't, ha I didn't know about Ravelry or maybe I did, but I didn't want to have another password to remember. I think that was, I think that was it. I think I knew it existed, but I just was like, oh, there's already enough social media. I don't need another one. Um, so... Yeah, I at that point I was using Pinterest, I think was my main way of finding patterns. And what I came up with was, this was back in the day when there were only two nephews. And um, I decided I wanted them each to have a little reindeer jumper, but I didn't want them to be identical. So I'll put a picture up of the first one that I found um, because I don't have a decent printed out copy of it but it is called The Child's Reindeer Sweater by Pearl and Jane who is Jane Ellison and it was a intarsia jumper. Um, I don't remember it being the best of patterns but I can't really tell you what the problem was. It, it's probably fine. It's knit flat and in pieces. In fact both of these first two are um, but like I said, that was before I had discovered Ravelry and I think it was probably only with Ravelry that I discovered knitting in the round. Before that I was knitting flat 
because that's very much the traditional way of knitting in the UK. Um, yeah, so I knitted that one. That was a DK weight jumper. And I also knitted this one for nephew number two, which has a very inspiring name. It is 3804 from King Co. Um, and it was an intarsia little jumper as well. I didn't put the, um, what's that called? I didn't put the pom-pom on, I just knitted the red bit. Uh, this, I remember being a slightly better pattern. Again, it was knit flat and in pieces that you had to sew together. Um, the cutest thing about this, I'll just have to quickly, this, this was paid for, but uh, it had that on the back. So it was Rudolph's face and then Rudolph's bum, which was um, very cute. I shouldn't be flashing that in front of the screen. Um, so yeah, those were the first two that I knitted. Um, quite ambivalent about the patterns. I have others that I would rate an awful lot higher, but there's they worked. There was nothing too wrong with them. I remember um, this one, I knitted it to pattern, but it was very short. It was almost like a cropped jumper on my nephew. Um, so I think that might have been when I started to think a bit more about measuring the children instead of just going with the pattern um, pattern measurements. Uh, yeah, so the next year I knitted Peanut by Tinker Knits again. <laughs> I think these uh, this video should be sponsored by Tinker Knits. Um, so this, as you can see, is not specifically a Christmas or festive jumper. It is very much a very cute, tracy little um, tank top. I think they call it hipster chic, yes. <laughs> hipster chic fair isle for toddlers and babies. Um, so I'll put a picture up of the two that I knitted. I think I was quite new to fair isle at that point and in the first one, or was it halfway through the second one, I realised I had been twisting my yarns, crossing my yarns every time I changed, you know, every time I went from laid, like say on here, red to cream, every single time, because I thought I had to do that. And it wasn't until I was like halfway through one of them, I think the second one, that I realised I didn't need to do that at all. And actually it has an awful lot more stretch if you don't. So that was a bit of a learning experience for me. Um, I think I've possibly knit this again, this pattern, um, great pattern, DK weight, um, it's obviously you've got the double layer but it's just around the stomach so it's not too hot, um, it was quite quick, the neckline was a little bit more tricky, you have to pick up and knit and then you have to sew this down, this bit can be a little bit more tricky but nothing terrible. Um, so yeah, I would recommend that one. That one goes right up, what are the sizes? This is definitely just a children's pattern. It only goes up to four years old. So it's, um, I think it was from their collection that was when they had newborn babies around the same time. Um, yes, it says on here, Max and Boldy's wardrobe. So it's from that collection there. Okay, moving right along. So the following year, um, I think this was the year that I stopped using acrylic. I had, the first year I had used superwash wool. The second year I had used acrylic because I basically only ever use things that parents can wash because I don't think it's fair for them to have to hand wash things. I, I don't really use a lot of super wash myself, but I don't think it's fair to ask others um, to commit to wool preservation <laughs> um, if they don't ask for it. So um, yeah, this year I, this third year, I also knitted in acrylic and that was the last time I did because it really hurt my hands. And I just thought at that point, I can't do acrylic, I don't like it, it's plastic, I don't like it in the environment anyway, I'll just have to go for superwash wool 
Um, so since then, it's always been the superwash wool that I use. But anyway, Haverin. The next one was the Anders and Anders Kids. Um, I think the only difference, if I remember rightly, was that Anders for the littler ones had some detail on the cuffs and Anders Kids didn't. Um, although I incorporated the colour from the Anders into the Anders Kids. Uh, the Anders Kids doesn't have, it just has a normal crew neck and the Anders has like a wee opening as well. These are by Soren Kerr. Um, I had mixed success with these. One thing was, I suppose it's a bit like petite knit patterns. I was a bit annoyed that you had to have a separate pattern for the babies and the kids um, when they're very, very much similar patterns. I, I suppose I've maybe just gotten a bit spoiled with people like Tin Can Knits um, who give you such a wide range. But yeah, I, I do kind of feel like if you're going to do a kid's jumper then just do the whole shebang don't be just doing something for babies and then have the exact same thing in kids um so that was a bit annoying and the other thing was i found that the neck detail for the kids version was far too tight to go over their heads and i actually had to do some surgery on that i had to cut it and make an opening at the back um like was on the baby pattern um, now that could have been because I used acrylic yarn and there's not as much stretch in that. It could also have been that I just bound off too tightly. Um, but when I looked at the details of the finished measurements, it did seem a little bit too tight for a kiddie's sweater. So if you were to do it yourself, I would just be mindful of that. But otherwise it is a beautiful design. Um, it's got a lovely braid along the bottom here, just bef between the ribbon and the colour work called a Vickle braid. I had never worked that before and I really enjoyed that. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was my third year of knitting the Christmas jumpers. For the fourth year, I've already talked about, it was the Yule Grin that I incorporated into a flax jumper. Um, the fifth year, I've already shown you, I did a um, my Dear Sweaters for two, one family and I did Marines for the other family and now we're on to two years ago and this is when they started getting all sorts of different things so let's go with nephew number one and he got a Christmas Dino Sweater by Marie Hoff or Marie Hoff I will put a picture up of his I slightly modified it in that I lowered that last band of colour work just because the little Christmas hats are duplicate stitched on afterwards and I wanted it to look symmetrical when the duplicate stitch was taken off so that he could wear them, he could wear the jumper the rest of the year. Now that turned out to be a silly decision because he wouldn't let me take the Santa hats off of the <laughs> off of the jumper so it now looks a bit kind of skew with and uh, like it's got too much space underneath it but um, anyway he's long since grown out of it so it doesn't really matter but he really enjoyed that one I remember it being a good pattern I don't think I had any issues with it whatsoever um, so yeah it's a lot of good fun I, I did enjoy that one um, next up I have got nephew number two, who was very much into trains at the time. So I made him this pattern, which is free from Phil Colana. It is called Foot Foot and it is designed by Karen S. Logger. Lo anyway, that's how I'm seeing it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is a free pattern. It is obviously got nothing to do with Christmas, but what I did, I'll put a picture in up here but what I did is I knitted it and then I duplicate stitched on some white over the tops of the carriages and made it into a Christmas tree train. So after the festive season had passed I he consented to letting me remove that 
white snow effect and he wore it for a good long time afterwards. I think he's now grown out of it. So now we're skipping forward again, I think. Yeah, because the other two that year were a moraine in Arnhem Wake, which I've already, or Worsted Wake, which I've already told you about. And the tiny little niece got her own um, Yilgrin flax combo. So now we're on to last year. I've already told you about two of those because they were the festive yoke pullovers. And the last two are this one here for nephew number three. It's called Tractor Pulling Stars by Catherine Paddington. Um, this was knit at a very tight gauge, so I actually knit at a slightly looser gauge. I will put my picture up here. Um, again, you can tell it's not a Christmas jumper, but I knitted it in colours that made it look like it was a uh, drive. The tractors were driving through snow on an icy road, um, and I put a little extra trim around the top and sleeves in an orange colour because orange is one of his favourite colours. Um, he was delighted with it. He's very much into his tractors, and it looked very cute on him. Uh, yeah, it was a good pattern. I would recommend it, and there's not a lot more to say about it. It was it was a good pattern. So we're coming to the home stretch now. <laughs> the last one I knitted was the Sinister Kitigan by Marna Gilligan, who is Anne Catchin Big. Um, again, not Christmassy, but I made it face stiff by, I'll show you, I'll put a picture in. I worked my increases using a contrast colour of white to make it look like it was snowing, and I worked the outline of the cats in white. I think it wasn't as successful as I would like, but I have still seen my nephew wearing it. He doesn't seem to mind. Um, he is into cats, among other things. So yeah, it was, was it a good pattern? I would say it was good, but I don't know if the fit was as good as I would have liked. Um, so I don't know if I would knit it again, but man, it's cute. If you did it in like really good uh, contrasting colours. The reason I went for the kind of tabby like colour is because he's got a toy that he has had since he was really tiny that looks those kind of colours as like a little tabby cat. So a, a little, well, a ginger, a little ginger tabby cat. So um, I wanted it to look like his toy. So we have reached the end of my body of work when it comes to Christmas jumpers. And I thought we'd just finally move on to a few patterns that are on my radar um, in case you're looking for some future inspiration as well. The first one is Snow Wonder by Heidi Kuremeyer, I think she's called. Um, this one is also available in an adult's pattern. Um, the only reason I haven't knitted it so far is I'm not a fan of the bobble, but I almost knitted it this year when I started having problems with incorporating the yoke of the boreal into the children's uh, jumpers. But now that I've kind of got my brain working a little bit better and have figured out a workaround, it's gone down the list, but it very well might be next year's version. Um, the next one is the Christmas Sweater 2019 by Twisted Knitwear. Um, it's just like your typical Intarsia children's sweater, but I thought it looked really cute. It's available with a um, snowman and also a gnome or Santa. Uh, so it's it's really cute. It's also a DK weight pattern. Um, then there's some free ones. There's the Jingle Bells, which is by Hannah Rimmon. It is a free pattern from Drops and there are also, I think there's two adult patterns. I think there's a male and a female pattern as well as the kids one. I think they've all got slightly different names but you will see it if you, you search for it. Um, again, double knit, um, but only a really small layer of knitting, so I think it wouldn't be just too hot um, in the colour work. And then finally, a couple of free patterns as well, but they are in Norwegian. 
So you would need to either speak Norwegian or uh, rely on Google Translate, but I am quite tempted by both of these. The first one is a uh, the still right. I don't know how to say this. Stilleskog, I think, by Lil Real Design, um, and also by Lil Real Design is the fabulously face stiff child sweater. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll put both of those up here since I said them so quickly. Um, again, DK weight. Uh, colour work so I was a little bit put off by that. So I think that's us finally got to the end. I hope you find a little bit of inspiration. Um, if the, you have any questions at all just do reach out or comment below and happy festive knitting when you come around to it. Take care of yourselves and I will be back with a normal episode very soon. Bye!